there's a certain, there's a lot of risk taking in the music, and I think a lot of like the best skaters are all about sort of taking risks in a way. So I think there's some, there's something recognized there as well. Mark Gonzalez came up to us, and I didn't know who Mark Gonzalez was at all. He was, some, he was some kid who came to one of our shows or something. And he just sort of gave me this VHS tape. And when I was watching it, I was really amazed by how it was shot because the camera was just sort of like, you know, it was like almost as if it was attached to the skaters in a way. And that to me looked so cool. And it, the, the action of it really resonated as far as like the same kind of action that was going on in like some of the music we were making. And I wanted to find out who shot it. And so Kim and Tamara like went out and looked for this kid and they found him. I came back home one day from record shopping and there was just like this young kid sitting there just like sort of twiddling his thumbs. And uh, it was Spike Jones. And so we sort of talked about like wanting to do a, a video where it incorporated that kind of shooting. And so he called a, a couple of his buddies and, and we just went all over LA and found these places and we just shot these guys just like, like shredding around LA. I certainly did want to appeal to like the skate scene, especially in the mid eighties. And so it's like, you know, when I hear that, that, uh, that skate dudes are putting our music in their videos, yeah, I mean, it's, it's totally cool. There's a huge tradition of kids like finding out about music from, through skate videos for sure. I clearly wanted to have something that was different in a skate video. And the whole idea of like the video part fitting the skater and the music being chosen by the skater for the part, I felt like Sonic Youth kind of perfectly fit with my skating. And I'm not sure when I came into like really being a big fan. And maybe it was around the Goo era. And then going backwards, you know, I mean, I think I heard one song, I was just like, this band rules, and like everything I had heard, I liked. I mean, Jason Lee was in a Sonic Youth video that I think Spike directed. You know, I've, I've met Ed a couple of times, and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a happening dude. He's, he, he seems like one of these guys that like, you know, he kind of has this really like mysterious world about him in a way. He, uh, he sends me his, his books all the time when like, he puts them out. I just like, these Ed Templeton books will arrive in the mail. I'm just like, oh, this is so awesome. So Dave Markey, who was in a band called <clears throat> Sin 34, he gave me a, a skateboard. It was a Sin 34 skateboard. I was basically skating around West LA, or at least attempting to, and it was like failing miserably, but I didn't have any, like, no guidance. Nobody like showed me how to do it. I'm just too tall, you know? I'm six foot six, and I was like, tall guys can't skate because they don't have that center uh, to earth gravity that like, you know, sort of more compact dudes have in a way. And that's, I, I kind of sort of, that was my reasoning. And then years later, I, uh, when we started playing with Nirvana, Chris Novoselic, who's as tall as I am, but not taller, like one night he just like jumped on a, on a board and he just like thrashed around and he was, he's like, I was like, oh, that kind of blows my theory about tall guys not being able to skate. Primarily it is a real sort of like, it's a solitary man's adventure. I only found art out of necessity because I wanted to do my own graphics. Because I would try to explain my ideas and I'd be like, it's like this, like a spoon with a fork. No, wait, like a diner sign, you know? And then I'd be like, I gotta just draw it because no one's understanding what I'm talking about. <laughs> 